And what can he produce from here? He's sending in deep. The header back is potentially dangerous, and it's quite brilliantly hooked into the net by Lee Miller. Aberdeen strike first against the runner play. Good header back from Severin. Instinctive striking play by Miller. Borman. Now David Robertson. Good willing. One one. David Goodwillie has come off the bench to score twice in recent games and his first SPL start of the season. He has the equalising goal. Aluko. Just needed tipping away by Zaluska. And he's close to finding the top left-hand corner. Again, Zaluska backpedaling, forced to tip an effort over the bar. And the boot was raised by Kerr. A free kick. And Mark Kerr's going to be called over, and I think he's going to get a yellow card for descent. Oh, he's off! And Kerr, on his return to Tallandice against his old club, is sent off for foul and abusive language. Brilliant free kick off the inside of the post. And Aberdeen, very grateful to still be on level terms. So, after those two games in particular, where do we stand with the race for Europe? Well, four clubs can still qualify for two positions in the new Europa League. Hearts in pole position at the moment on 54, Dundee United on 53, Aberdeen on 49, and arithmetically, Hibs can actually still finish third, uh, even though they are on 45 points at the moment. All these games still to be played, though. Starting on Tuesday, when Hearts travel to Aberdeen and Dundee United go to Celtic. Uh, Hibernian at home to Rangers on Wednesday. Then on Saturday, Hearts, Dundee United, that could be a vital one. Aberdeen going to Rangers on Sunday. Hibs at home again against the other side of the old firm, Celtic. And then on the final Sunday, Aberdeen against Hibs. Hearts go to Celtic and Dundee United at home to Rangers. It's still interesting, Jim, but it should be pointed out Hart supposedly in pole position. They've only won one of the last seven games. Yeah, I mean they, they had that <coughs> you know magnificent spell where they got themselves ahead of the uh, the, the pack for that um, Europa League place. <coughs> but uh, everyone's pegging them back, and, and again, you know I think Aberdeen, you know the side that might just mm. sneak into that mix there. They, you know they're four points behind, but they play Hearts at the weekend. If they win that, they're a point behind the United. And uh, you know, some you know a couple of very difficult fixtures to to come, but I think Aberdeen might be the one that might just sneak in there. I know we were being nice to Hibs; they are saying they can still finish third. More likely, they'd be targeting fourth if they believe in themselves. Yeah, but I think Hibs' big match was uh, during the mm. yeah, Hearts at Tyne Castle, winning that. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, again, they're aside. If, if you look at them, you know, they've been very consistent in terms of results. Uh, but for the, a couple of key players injured uh, mm. over the season, and I think that's caught up in them at times. Maybe just the, the squad strength hasn't been there for the United, um, particularly in the front area. But uh, you know, yeah, they've made it very difficult for the old firm, and I'm sure they'll try and do so again at Celtic Park. It is a new tournament next season, replaces the UEFA Cup. Great incentive for clubs to get through because there could be more games. Yeah, of course. Any any league. <coughs> I mean, I know sometimes down south they were complaining, uh, you know, about the, the fact that there's a lot of league games. But uh, I don't think any other teams will be complaining, particularly, you know, get games at home, European night. It's fantastic, brings in, in the revenue for the, the, the club's much needed revenue. So, you know, I think yes, they'll be given everything to try and achieve that European place. Would you like to name two from four? I'm going to name Hearts and Aberdeen, Jim. OK, Jim, thank you very much indeed. We shall see.